Hi, uh, hope everybody's all right in this uh, insane world that we're living in. I uh, just want to thank everybody for all the comments for the last video. You're all too kind, thank you very much. So for the next video, I was going to build the Italia 255. I started cleaning up the parts and it dawned on me I wasn't impressed with the kit. Um, maybe some other time, I don't know. Uh, I think Tammy do a T55, so I may buy one of their kits. So I rummaged around and um, didn't have any tanks, so I had these sat on the shelf for some time. So it was a matter of uh, tossing the coin and um, this one won. So I'm just going to take a very, very quick look in the box. Uh, wings. Props wheels, fuselage halves, decals of the paint guide, glazed parts. What's this? A receipt. Fifteen ninety nine. Manchester Model Shop. Ninety seven. Wow. So it's not rocket science here. I'm going to release all the cockpit parts and internals, and then the fuselage halves. So with all the internal cockpit parts cleaned up, I'm just going to do a little bit of assembly. I'm just going to use the fuselage half as a jig, just for these uh, two frames to set. First application is matte black making sure I get in all the nooks and crannies and all the parts. This is so that when I apply the interior green colour, I only apply it from a certain direction. Letting that black show through in the corners just adds a lot of contrast to the interior. Uh, interior green is up to you, it's a personal choice. This is mine. You can mix your own or buy off the shelf. Doesn't always mean it's right. Next thing I'm doing now is picking all the detail out by brush. Panels, switches, Now that's done, I've sealed everything in with a satin varnish. Next thing I was going to do was to add a wash, but before I do that, Tammy has supply some decals to add to the instrument panel. So that's next. So I've added an oil wash, 
just to bring out all that lovely detail and those lovely inject pin marks. Thankfully they won't be seen. Next thing to do is to add all the components to the cockpit area. Add the assembly to the fuselage half. And this access door, I'm just going to tape in position. It's movable, I haven't decided yet whether to glue it into position yet. And then just close the fuselage halves up. The pilots, I wasn't originally going to add them. They look a bit odd. It looks like they've got no neck. But I've decided to go with them anyway. First thing I've done is add a coat of Tamiya White. This will help accentuate the highlights when I come to do all the brushwork. I'm using Citadel and Vallejo model colour paints. I'm not going to show you the whole process. Far too long winded. Perhaps save it for another day. But I start off with a light colour wash and then build up the darks. Last thing I do is just add a little bit of highlight to the nose and the cheeks. With all the paint dry, I seal everything in with a coat of satin varnish. And then once that's dry thoroughly, I've added a Tamiya panel line wash. So on these props I'm going to apply silver and I'm going to be really lazy here and use Humbrol's acrylic silver paint straight from the can. This paint dries really quickly so it allows me to apply the Tamiya black soon afterwards. While I'm applying the black to the blades might as well at the same time apply the black to the radial engines. Now using a well-worn sanding pad now, I'm just going to take some of this black paint off, hopefully to reveal the silver underneath. Just to add that faded look, I'm going to add a, a grey pastel. I don't need a lot, just a very tiny amount. Now I'm going to add a highlight to these radial engines using Mr Hobby's metal colour, iron, with a very tiny amount on the end of a brush. I'm just going to wipe the excess off and then just coat the surface. Picks out all that detail. Now I shall get on with the other one. 
Next thing I'm doing is the drive shaft casing. Just a bluey grey colour. Now everything is dry, I can pick out that detail. I'm using Tamiya panel wash. Just pick out the detail around the drive shaft casing. For the cylinders, I'm just going to use a dark brown wash. The actual radial engine I'm going to glue to the cow flaps. But the actual cow to rear flaps is just a press fit. That's how good it is. I'm going to use the wheel bay part as a jig just for the undercarriage to uh, set properly. With the undercarriage part set, I've added a coat of Tamiya Black. Once that was dry, I've picked out all that detail using Mr. Hobby's aluminium. Just a tiny amount is required on the end of the brush. Oh, look, a wheel. I'm just going to use Tammy's panel line wash just to uh, add a bit of life to this wheel. So the last thing I've done is add some tan pastel to the face of the tire. With that done, I can assemble the whole undercarriage now. So the wing parts, um, not the usual way wings go together. 
and I've been doing a lot of dry fitting just to make sure there are no issues, even though it's a Tamiya kit. It's hard to tell till I've actually applied glue for definite will I have any issues. I had at one point thought of gluing the top wing to the fuselage first on both sides. But then I decided it's a Tamiya kit, they know what they're doing, I shouldn't have any issues. Or if they are, they'll be tiny. So I'm going to stick with Tammy's instructions. So I've added the wing lights and I've smothered them in filler. Once that's nice and dry, I shall sand them flush. Colour the nav lights. I didn't know whether the bulbs should be coloured or the actual lenses. The rear ones are left clear. I've glued one side of the wing. It's a very nice fit. Just got the other side to glue. The landing lights, I've used what they call decorative stones. They give a far better impression than I could ever with paint. So the wing assembly to the fuselage assembly. It goes together quite well, especially underneath, no issues whatsoever. But on top, I've got some gaps. They're only hairline. The worst ones are around the fillet area at the rear. I've closed some of these gaps up using tape. And then with the little gaps I've got, and they are only little, I'll use some plastic card to fill them in. So that's all the seams sanded now. Just got one more thing to add. So I'm adding the crew next. The one at the back's a bit of a tight squeeze. <laughs> So with everything masked off, I'm going to apply the first colour, which is some interior green around the cockpit area and the observers area. I'll also use this colour to check for any blemishes. Next is AK's matte aluminium. So AK's metal dries pretty quickly, but I gave it a good day before I applied the next coat, which is a Tamiya mix of flat black, royal blue and some grey. I do not want to be adding just a pure flat black. Now before that paint's had time to dry, I'm just going to use a toothpick and create some wear marks. Next thing I usually do is pick out certain panels and certain areas by brush using the dark grey here. Looks a bit ropey but that's part of the effect. After that the paint is left to dry for a good few days. Next I'm going to sand the surface nice and smooth. This does two things for me. 
it preps the surface for the decals and also I'm hoping some of that silver will show through the black. I've also got to be careful not to burn through to the plastic which is so easily done. So I'm wiping the surface clean and checking frequently. So after cleaning the surface with a brush and water, I'm just drying it all off. I've decided to add another tone and I'm going to mask off some of the flight control surfaces. I just want to add something very subtle by airbrush. So as you can see, it's different, but not too different. I'm having to use the uh, Tamiya decals. I didn't want to, I want to create my own masks. Now the roundels in the fin flash, no problem. But I had trouble with the uh, code letters. I was going down this route because I wanted to create the dull red code letters rather than light ones that uh, Tamiya supply. But I'm afraid my cutting technique wasn't up to scratch. So I've had to revert to the Tamiya decals. I did a little test piece to make sure whether they work or not. And they went down okay, but you can see where they're breaking it around the edge there. So they may give me some issues. So I'm using Microsoft for the uh, decals. So for their age, the Tamiya decals went down okay. They were slightly brittle and they start to go around the edges on some of them but other than that no real major issues. One of the fin flashes looks like it's out of register. Oh well. Once dry I've wiped any residue off with a damp cloth and then I've used this Artist Acrylic Matte Varnish for the first time. I thought I'd give it a go. Thin it down with water and I think the more applications you have the more of a flat finish you'll get. So I've got the cow collector ring to paint and I've already got that black base coat underneath. So I'm just going to add Mr. Hobby's iron. Just a tiny amount on the end of the brush, wipe as much excess as I can off and then using a stippling motion just go around the whole ring. Left this for a good few days to dry and now I'm going to use some Citadel paints, a brown and a red and I've created a very thick mixture here. Now I've got to act quickly here because this will dry very quickly. Just wiping a bit of the excess off and then once again a stippling motion just going around the ring. Need to move quickly here because this paint will dry very quickly because it's been so thick. This won't work if the paint's too thin. So now I've got everything finished, I think. I can piece this bow fighter together.
So for its age, it's a very nice kit. And I like this kit. Nicely detailed, not many parts. I'd be very interested to see how it compares with the Revell kit. So thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.